The topic of this video is finding the domain of the sum, difference, product, or quotient of two functions. Let's look at a problem. Given f of x equals the fraction 3x plus 4 all divided by 5x minus 8, and g of x equals the fraction 4x all divided by 5x minus 8, what is the domain of f over g of x? All right, so notice that we're not asked to find f over g of x. We're only asked to determine its domain. Nonetheless, we will still create it. So this means take the two functions, f of x and g of x, and divide them. So we have an f of x divided by a g of x. And interestingly, in this problem, both f of x and g of x are fractions. So when we substitute, we're going to have something of the form fraction over fraction. So we're going to have 3x plus 4 over 5x minus 8, that's f of x, divided by 4x over 5x minus 8, which is g of x. All right, this is the first moment in our problem where the function names are no longer part of the problem. We had f and g, f and g, but this is the first moment where there's no f, no g. So this is where we stop and determine our domain. All right, let's go through the four steps together. Here we go. Step one is to start with all real numbers. Step two is to look for even index radicals. There are none, so step two is not applicable. Step three is to look for log arguments. There are none, so step three is also not applicable. Step four is to look for denominators, and this is where things get very interesting. We know that when we are dealing with something of the form fraction over fraction, that there are three places that are not allowed to be zero. We are not allowed to have a zero here, here, or here. Zero in the numerator of the numerator is okay, but not in any of these three places. So that gives us the following statements. 5x minus 8 is not allowed to be 0. That's this one. 4x is not allowed to be 0. That's this one. And 5x minus 8 is not allowed to be 0, which we already have, so there's no need to write it twice. Now solve both of these inequalities. Adding 8 to both sides, we get 5x is not equal to 8. Dividing by 5 on both sides, we get x is not equal to 8 fifths. For this inequality, dividing 4 on both sides, we get x is not equal to 0. So our domain consists of every real number in the world except for 0 and 8 fifths. To write this as an interval, it's often helpful to create a number line first. If we want every number in the world other than 0 and 8 fifths, that means we want all the numbers that are to the left of 0, all the numbers that are to the right of 8 fifths, and all of the numbers that are in between the two values, but not 0 and not 8 fifths. So we can see that this gives us three distinct intervals, and we must join them all together to create our final answer. Left forever is negative infinity, right forever is positive infinity. So let's make our intervals. The first one goes from negative infinity to 0. And we have a parenthesis on both ends. The next interval goes from 0 to 8 fifths. And we have a parenthesis on both ends because we're excluding those values. And our third interval goes from 8 fifths to infinity. And again, we have parentheses at both ends. In order to unite all of these intervals together, we use the union symbol. So our final answer for this problem as an interval will look like this. As a set, we would write the set of all x such that x is real. However, x is not equal to 8 fifths, and x is not equal to 0. This is set notation. OK. That is the end of this problem.